Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, I'm trying to repair my wife's uh, KitchenAid uh, blender. This is the KitchenAid Professional 6 blender. Uh, purchased it, I don't know, probably 8-10 years ago. But we don't use it often. Um, and uh, right now it's uh, completely dead. Um, I got it plugged in already. And this is the only control that I can find. And no matter which setting I'm putting it on, is nothing is happening at all. So it's completely dead. Um, we don't even use it that much. Uh, we're not bakers. Uh, just that the holidays coming, uh, Thanksgiving 2020, and uh, we thought that uh, we would like to bake bake some pie, <clears throat> but it's not working. Yeah, so I'm gonna try to open it up and repair it. Um, Pretty disappointed for such a monstrous machine you know it looks so tough but then we don't even use it like maybe once or twice a year and it breaks or it broke but we'll see let's check out what we can open and see what's going on inside There were five screws that holds this top part. Um, the first one that you have to, re to remove is the one at the back. This one was holding the uh, the strap. Um, this is this is what I mean by the strap. So it was that way, and then that hole right there is where the screw, the first screw, that you have to remove. Once you remove the strap, it will expose four more screws. Two on the uh, left side and two on the right side and afterwards um, I don't see any more screws I think we can just remove the uh, this top piece now okay I uh, found the problem um, and uh, tried to uh, troubleshoot so many places so I'll give you a brief description of what I've done um, this is the switch it used to sit right here on this side and uh, I removed the uh, two screws uh, one on this side and then one on that side right there so when this is has been removed um, I tested for the voltage uh, there's a constant voltage here from the plug from that plug right there the cable goes to this uh, one that says brown here and then the one that says uh, blue and these two red uh, covered cables here are actually the uh, the positives or the hot that goes to the motor and <clears throat> the one that goes to motor 2 uh, this particular cable right here the one that goes to motor 2 on the left side um, actually goes to this cable here and comes down to here and it goes to this particular connection here that I put a cap on so let me remove the cap okay make sure you have the electricity turned off of course when you get to this particular part um, this part right here used to be connected to a fuse and let me show you where the fuse is this is the fuse in my hand and the fuse used to sit uh, right here um, just like that connecting these two and this fuse is bad um, trying to yeah, see if I can zoom in to this particular fuse um, there I'm not sure if you can uh, that's just uh, not enough light let me put it over there Yeah, that fuse right there. I'm gonna take a picture, a close-up picture, so I can read um, and and try to replace this fuse here. Read the uh, the numbers so that I can replace it. Uh, in the meantime, my wife would like to use it. So just as long as uh, we're not straining the motor, I think I can put this back for now. Uh, what I did was I uh, just use a regular cap, cap it on, and I'm gonna probably use um electrical tape to make sure that it stays and it doesn't come loose as this thing is going to vibrate and move obviously 
Um, so we can use it today. In the meantime, <clears throat> that I am going to order this fuse and get it replaced once uh, once I get it back. I'm probably gonna solder this together uh, into the uh, um, into the wire uh, and then put a heat shrink cover on it and then put it all back then it, will, it should be good as new so obviously this is a, a pretty surprisingly bad design um, in my opinion because why would anybody put a fuse amongst this cable that was actually this was actually strapped in uh, to this uh, coil the motor coil and it was strapped in using these um, tie wraps um, and I had to cut the tie wraps uh, unfold it and uh, to to see what's inside uh, this this line because it wasn't making connectivity it wasn't delivering the power and I found out that there's a fuse in the middle that is um, actually blown so I mean why don't they just put put the fuse somewhere here on the board make it really accessible I don't know it is bizarre, something as popular as KitchenAid, as expensive as it is, to have a design like this. Very bizarre. Anyhow, I'm happy to be able to find this thing and I'm going to cap it again and show you uh, that it's now working. Okay, I got the, uh, the two cables capped off and I'm just going to tuck it in right here so it doesn't get uh, tangled up as uh, the motor moves. Um, there is a cap that goes on top to here that I had to remove in order for me to get this motor, uh, the, the front part of the motor, to be able to be lifted up. Uh, I'm not going to put that on right now yet. Um, I'm going to just show you. I have the, uh, the speed setting here set to the lowest level, number one. And I'm going to turn it on right here. Uh, and I'm just going to turn it right off uh, as soon as I see it turn. Okay, so the um, motor is running. Um, I had to put the uh, the cover on uh, because uh, at the lowest speed, um, sometimes it doesn't actually actuate. Not exactly sure why, but when I put it to the speed two, speed three, it start going, and uh, it's working just fine. And then after that, I put it back to speed one. It seems to work. Probably it was stuck um, for not being on for a long time, not sure. But anyway, it's, it's completely working right now. I'm just going to put the cover back on. Uh, I'll put all the screws back in, put the cover back on, and uh, call it a day until I get the, uh, the fuse back. Okay, um, it is uh, all put back together and it is running. So, speed number one, two, three, four. Sounds kind of noisy. I'm not sure. I think the motor may be going out. But um, yeah, I think it may last a few more years, not sure, you may have to replace the motor. But it um, looks like there's a, a service number here. But for now, I'm just going to order this, uh, this fuse and get it fixed. I doubt that this is under warranty. Um, after all, it's been, like I said, about 8 to 10 years. But uh, at least we can use it for today. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel to see more do-it-yourself videos like these and support my channel. Thank you.